a few things I want to share with you about Bill's vision and Bill's sense of love and wishes to be here. He's actually talking to designers. So our Lear uh, is set in contemporary times. And for those of you who've seen Bill's Shakespeare's, you know that Bill is fond of, a, of the contemporary accessibility. Mm -hmm. um, and so King Lear is set in a, what are we calling it? A mythical modern European kingdom. Hmm. Um, okay. Not Great Britain, mm -hmm. although it may look like Great Britain, it's not Great Britain. Um, <laughs> It's being done in the round in the Thomas Theater, and I believe this is the first time it's being done in the Thomas Theater. It is, and yeah, so first time. What what mm -hmm. the production aims to do is to take what is traditionally regarded as an epic play, this massive, you know, and it's, and, there, and I'm sure there's no coincidence that references to nature, to the enormity of these feelings and the relationships that are happening. Um, you know, it's because the play is so large. And so what we're trying to do is by placing it in a more intimate setting in the round, in the Thomas, is that we can bring the play closer to the audience and, and somehow make very personal what is traditionally perceived to be a very large and a play that's up here, you know. Um, you'll probably see a lot of in audience interactions with this play. I think, I think we're finding more and more moments to do direct address. Um, for those of you who saw Animal Crackers last year, Dice K. Suji, who's playing the fool, does a very similar thing with the audience. Bill has also been really interested in, you know, I think he was, for those of you who saw Amanda's Julius Caesar two years ago, he was really, really inspired by her approach to a very meta theatricality mm -hmm. and a kind of transparency with how you make the work and how that intersects with the work itself. And so what we have in this production, um, in King Lear there are many servants, messengers, soldiers, these, you know, the the people uh, who make the play function, mm -hmm. right? Passing of letters, transporting information. Um, in our production, we have stagehands. Our crew members are actually playing the roles of the servants, messengers, soldiers, uh, wow. in the, and they have lines and they're acting. Mm -hmm. And it's and we have elaborate, trans, you know, um, these these transitions where, you know, for example, a stagehand comes in, sets a chair, and has a line, says, "Yes, madam, I will go fetch Gloucester." And, and, and we're kind of intersecting this idea of what is real, what is not real, you know, the meta theatrics of the machine itself of the play and the play itself. And to further accentuate that, we have two actual actors, Torin Bruno and Ray Fisher, who are playing stagehands, playing actors in the production. <laughs> and so part of the joy, as you'll find out, is um, seeing a stagehand, oh, that stagehand's an actor. And then you see an actor, oh no, that actor is a stagehand. And at what point the lines you know, of reality and fiction start to blur in this production, I think is one of the joys that we're finding. Uh, we can't think of any other theater that has ever produced Lear in particular uh, in this way, having two different actors playing Lear in the same production. Um, you know, we've heard of productions where, you know, for example, the the actor playing Lear and the actor playing Gloucester, uh, like like would switch roles, like you know, for, from night to night. Uh, like you know, we've heard of, of such productions, but not where a single production actually has two different leaders who are performing on alternate nights. So, so what has that been like? Like, what are the challenges of having two such different leaders, you know, from Mike Winters to Jack Willis? Um, and, and what is it like for the other actors? Uh, part of the joy in doing King Lear with two leaders is that you get to run the play a lot. Um, <laughs> and the rest of the ensemble benefits from the repetition. You do it once with one leader, and you have to do it again with the other leader. Um, the challenge is how do you balance the time, you know, and, and how do you make decisions to keep a, a kind of consistency in the production and to still honor each actor's choices and, the, and what they bring to it. And for those of you who, who've seen Mike Winters and those of you who've seen Jack Willis know that these are two very, very different actors. Mm -hmm. um, I lovingly refer to Mike as the Lear of Light. <laughs> and I lovingly refer to Jack as the Lear of Darkness. <laughs> Um, I think they would both love that. And, they, and yeah. I think they do. I mean, there is a clear, a clear agreement in the room about when Mike's on stage, oh, he's this kind of leer. And when Jack comes in, suddenly the play becomes very savage, very hard. And he's taken a very, very hard approach to King Lear. And he is relentless, and he's a powerhouse. And, you know, from all the way, that's the, guy, that's the kind of guy Jack is, and that's the kind of energy he has. You know, he's out there, and he's vicious, and he's 
Er. And so, yes, I believe that with Jack as King Lear, this is a world where someone can gouge someone's eyes out, and that makes perfect sense. You know, that's the kind of kingdom he runs. Um, so how do, we, how, how do we honor the kind of Lear that Mike brings? And Mike has actually played Lear before, um, which in itself is another interesting challenge. And Jack has not done Lear before, and he hasn't done much Shakespeare either, from, my, from what I understand. And so, you know, balancing this idea of, okay, and the Lears watch each other in the room, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. um, and there are moments where, you know, one has said, yeah. for the mad scene, let's not watch each other. Yeah. Let's have Mike do his thing, Jack will be in the green room, and then when, when Mike's done, Mike will leave and Jack will come in and he'll do his thing. And, then, you know, and I think that's the one scene where Bill has agreed, okay, mm -hmm. this will be completely yours, and this will be completely yours. And I mm -hmm. think when it comes time to tech the show, we will have two sets of lighting cues and sound cues for that scene. Okay. Um, and so again, part of the challenge has been Blocking, how do you negotiate blocking? And so we're hoping by having the two leaders watch each other, they will borrow each other's ideas, and they have. Mm -hmm. There are moments when Jack is on the throne and he's playing a lot of moments on the throne, and moments where Mike is playing things in the bomb, uh, and they borrow from each other. And so the, the hope, the hope is that we will get the best of both leaders mm -hmm. in a very general sense. At the same time, with watching each guy, you will see a very, lean, a very heavy leaning towards one tone versus another tone mm -hmm. of the production. So, so uh, the question was, why did we choose to, to, to do two Lears? Um, I think that that is probably a, a question that is locked in the mysteries of the casting committee. Um, although I will tell you from, from our conversations during the season selection process, when we were talking about, you know, is, is it time for us to do King Lear? Um, one of the first questions that always comes up is, um, is who is your Lear? Um, you know, because it's, 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 it's one of the paradoxes of this play that, you know, by the time an actor is, um, is, is ready to, to play the gravitas of Lear, uh, oftentimes the physical stamina uh, is, you know, can, 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 can vary. You know, I, 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 there was a very famous Shakespeare actor at the beginning of the 20th century who said, um, you know, his best advice to an actor playing Lear was get a small Cordelia. <laughs> You're going to be tired by the end. You don't want to be, you know, lifting up a, a, a tall, buxom Cordelia. Get a small one. Um, and, so, and so when we got to that point in the conversation of, okay, if we're going to do Lear, who is your Lear? Um, we found ourselves in this, in, in this incredible situation of having an embarrassment of riches, of having, you know, uh, you know two incredible actors in our company um, who we could, at the drop of a hat, see playing Lear. Um, so, so it became something that, you know, that, you know, we talked about in season selection that I think, you know, then went into, um, into the, the casting conversations, you know, which Bill leads um, with his senior staff and with, and with the acting company. Um, and, so, and so when Bill announced that, that they uh, were going to do uh, this Lear with two actors, um, it just became, uh, like, you know, an unexpected way of looking at this play because we had because we had two different, you know, insights into who this character was. So, you know, I, I can't even imagine the hours of conversation that went in on, on in casting, but very excited to see the results. So, um, so I do want to, you know, thank you all so much for being here. Uh, thank you, thank you.